Shema O Israel, Shabbat Shalom, Ami Bet Saris Davi, and Maisha Baki is here with us as well, and Sister Bridge will be joining us shortly. Before we go any further, we're going to have the blowing of the shofar, then we're going to have our opening song in which we don't own the rights to. After that, we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance and prayerfully a song by Sister Bridge, all in that order. Low battery, please charge. of allegiance and after that a song by Sister Bridge. Song my sister Bridge. I think we might have lost her. We may have to come back. Anyhow, we're going to keep it moving. Our first chapter this Sabbath day is our first scripture is from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. It is written, Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. 
Our next scripture this afternoon is from Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. It is written, He that turns away his ear from hearing Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. Hallelujah. Our next scripture is the Torah portion from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. It is written, And El spake all these words, saying, I am Yah by El, which have brought thee out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other El before me. You shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yah by El, am a jealous El. Visit then the iniquity of the Abbas upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh El in vain, for Yah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yah thy El. In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, thy man ebed, thy maid ebed, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the Sabbath day. Therefore Yah Bless the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy Abba and thy Amma, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh gives thee. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You shall not lust after thy neighbor's house. You shall not lust after thy neighbor's Isha, nor his manny bed, nor his maidy bed nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. We got to see, we got sister, I see we got sister Bridge back and she's going to bring a song. Can you hear me first of all? Yes. No? Yes, hallelujah. So I'm just going to sing a little bit of this song that's in my rock. Sister Bridge, but we're going to continue to speak the Most High's Ruach over ourselves and allow the Most High to take control over each and every facet of our lives. Before we go any further, we're going to have our opening prayer now. Now I'm going to kneel and face this holy oracle. Father Yah, as we kneel before thy throne of mercy and grace, we glorify you and lift you up, Father, truly, because 
Today is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We ask, Father, that as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, as we invoke your Ruach in your name and your word over our lives, that you come by and be with us, sup with us, and commune with us this day, Father. You're welcome here, Father. You're welcome in me. You're welcome in my Isha. You're welcome in our home. You're welcome in the homes that are joining us online, Father Yah. As we kneel before thy throne, we look to you from Daniel 9, verses 4 through 19, that says, O Yah, the great and dreadful El, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy ebeds, the Narvish, which speak in thy name to our kings, our princes, and to our abbas, and to all the people of the land. O Yah, lawfulness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of face, as at this day to the men of Yehuda, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Yah, to us belong confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, to our abbas, because we have sinned against thee. To Yah, El belongs mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against them. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yah, El, to walk in this Torah, which he set before us by his ebeds, the Narvis. Yea, O Israel, have transgressed thy Torah, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us in the oath that is written in the Torah Moshe, the Ebed El, because we sinned against you, Yah, and you have confirmed your words which you spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven have not been done, as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the Torah of Moshe, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before Yah El that we might turn from our iniquities and understand Yah's truth. Therefore have Yah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For Yah El is lawful in all his works which he do, for we obey not his voice. And now, O Yah, our El, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Mitrium with a mighty hand, and has gotten me renowned as at this day, with sin we have done wickedly. O Yah, according to all thy lawfulness, we beseech thee. Let thy anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our others, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our El, hear the prayer we thy ebeds in these supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolate for your sake. O our El, incline thy ear and hear, open thy eyes, and behold our desolations in the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our lawfulnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Yah, hear, O Yah, forgive, O Yah, hearken and do, defer not for thy own sake, O our El, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. We ask, Father, that as we invoke, Father, each and every aspect of your Ruach over our lives, that you would commune and suck with us this day, Father. Carry us from glory to glory, faith to faith, and strength to strength in you. We ask, Father, that as we invoke your Word in Psalm 143, the Ebed's prayer, Father, that you will have mercy upon we, your children. Many of us need your mercy right now, Father Yah. And as we look to you, we ask that you would hear our prayer, O Yah, and give it to our supplications. And thy faithfulness answer us, and in thy lawfulness. Enter not into judgment with we, thy Ebed's, for in thy sight shall no man live and be justified. For the enemy have persecuted our souls. It has smitten our lives down to the ground. It has made us to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is our walk overwhelmed within us. Our hearts within us is desolate. We remember the days of old. We meditate on all thy works. We muse on the work of thy hands. We stretch forth our hands unto thee. Our souls thirst after thee as a thirsty land Selah. Hear speedily, O Yah, who walk fails. Hide not thy face from us, lest we be like unto them that go down into the pit. 
Cause us to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do we trust. Cause us to know the way wherein we should walk, for we lift up our souls unto thee. Deliver us, O Yah, from our enemies. We flee unto thee to hide us. Teach us to do thy will, for thou art our El, thy Ruach is good. Lead us in the land of uprightness. Quicken us, O Yah, for thy name's sake. For thy lawfulness' sake, bring our souls out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off our enemies and destroy all them that afflict our souls, for we are thy ebeds. We need you now, Father. We ask that as we look to you, the author and finisher of your, our faith, that you would be with us, bless us, guide us, and keep us according to your election and purpose. We ask, Father, that you would hear our cry from the warrior's prayer in Psalm 27 that says, Yah is our light and our Yeshua, whom shall we fear? Yah is the strength of our lives, of whom shall we be afraid? When the wicked, even our enemies and our foes, came upon us to eat up our flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against us, our hearts shall not fear. Though war should rise against us, in this will we be confident. One thing have we desired of Yah that we would seek after, that we may dwell in the house of Yah all the days of our lives to behold the beauty of Yah and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide us in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide us. He shall lift us, set us up upon a rock. And now shall our heads be lifted up above our enemies round about us. Therefore will we offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. We will sing, yea, we will sing praises unto Yah. Hear, O Yah, when we cry with our voices, have mercy also upon us and answer us. When thou said, Seek ye your face, our heart said unto thee, Thy face, Yah, will we see. Hide not thy face from us, put not thy ebeds away in anger. You have been our help, leave us not, neither forsake us, O El of our Yeshua. When our Abba and our Amas forsake us, then you will take us up. Teach us thy way, O Yah, and lead us in a plain path because of our enemies. Deliver us not over unto the will of our enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against us, and such as breathe out cruelty. We have fainted unless we have believed to see the goodness of Yah in the land of the living. Wait on Yah, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, we say, on Yah. And as we wait on you, Father Yah, we ask that you would strengthen not only me and my Ishi and sister Bridge and use us as instruments of thy will and thy purpose, but strengthen each and every one that would join us, Father. We ask that you would continue to show a difference between your covenant keepers, Father, and those who take your covenant and throw it aside. We ask, Father, right now that you would empower us to be a blessing unto the widows, the widow, widowers, the fatherless, the oppressed and poor. Empower us to be a blessing unto all of those right now going through hunger and homelessness, eviction, foreclosure, turn-off notices, and repossession. Some got immigration issues. Some got financial issues. Some got courtroom issues. Some got heart issues. Some got ruach issues, Father. We ask that you would move according to your election and purpose. We ask this this day in your son Yeshua name we pray. Hallelujah. I praise and thank the Most High for keeping us and we do apologize for the little technical difficulty at the beginning we had. I know Sister Bridge got cut off in the middle of a song. I hope all is well with everybody round about us with all that is going on. I hope and pray that everything going on round about each and every one is truly, truly ordained of the Most High. Because as we find it out, a lot of things that we go through, some things, most of them things are orchestrated by the Most High, whether they're good or evil. I understand we are waiting on the cycle of the second scriptural month, the new moon, to happen tonight. For those who don't understand what I'm talking about, it's only 12 months. And we take the scriptures by faith. I understand that a lot of people don't understand when people are trying to explain to them about when Abib is 
is and the new year is and all it is saying. People say it's complicated. Well, it depends upon what you're listening to. If you're listening to a bunch of commentary and nobody's showing you in scripture where to find what they're saying without them adding to it. Well, I can see how it can be confusion. Alright? I can see how confusing that will be. Never let nobody talk you into nothing. If they saying this in this book and the word says, they should be able to take you there and show it to you. And let that be that. Alright? A lot of times we take commentary over what the Most High has prescribed in His Word and we find ourselves keeping somebody else's New Year, keeping somebody else's Passover. The Most High Word is clear on when His Passover begins. It ain't got nothing to do with the children of the barley or the children of the full moon. Alright? It's very important that we remember it's only 12 months. A lot of times people will try to talk you into some conditions, circumstances, and situations that they have conjured up to get you to keep their New Year, their Passover. Alright? Exodus chapter 12 is very, very clear on when the Most High's Passover is. And even Numbers chapter 9 is very clear on when his second Passover is. Now there's some rules and regulations going on with that second Passover. So search your heart of hearts and see if you add up to them. Alright? We're going to talk today about faith. Alright? Faith and adding to it. A lot of times we as Israel, we, we got things going on a lot of times and because we have these things going on and have a lack of understanding or a lack of faith, faith is, is, is very important that we understand what faith actually is, alright? There are people who are, are claiming to be of this truth, in this truth. But come to find out when they open up their mouth and give you the commentary and not scripture, you want to see that they have a truth for all of their own. Alright? Anytime somebody is giving you a truth and trying to tell you, you know, the book of Enoch or the Enoch calendar said when the bee been passed over, he was gone. He was taken away long before Moshe was given the oral law to institute these things in which we have to acknowledge, which are our holy days. Our first scripture today on faith. Yeah, we starting in the Torah. It's only one time in the Torah. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 1 reads on this wise. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of Yah. Ascribe ye greatness unto our El. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A Elohim of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite Yah? O foolish people and unwise, is not he thy Abba that hath brought thee? Have he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy Abba, and he will show thee. Thy Zakain, and they will tell thee. When El Elyon divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For Yah's portion is his people, 
Yaakov is the lot of his inheritance. He found him, him in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As the eagle stirs up her nest, flutters over her young, spreads abroad her wings, takes them, bears them on her wings, so Yah alone did lead him, and there was no strange Elohim with him. He made him ride on the high places, places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou did drink the pure blood of the brick. But yes, you run, wax fat, and kicked. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness, then he forsook Elohim, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his Yeshua. They provoked him to jealousy with strange El. With abominations provoked they to him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to El, to Elohim whom they knew not, to new Elohim that came newly up, whom your others feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and, have, and has forgotten Elohim that formed thee. And when Yah saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not Elohim. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend my arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say our hand is high. And Yah have not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and Yah had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongs vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is, or is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For Yah shall judge his people and repent himself for his ebeds. When he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left, and he shall say, Where are their Elohim, their rock in whom they trusted? which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. 
See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no L with me, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and I say, I live forever. If I let my glittering sword in my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenge upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people. For he will avenge the blood of his ebeds and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moshe came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Hoshe, the son of Nun. And Moshe made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land. Whether ye go over Jordan to possess it, and Yah spake unto Moshe that self same day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, abide unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Eureka, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession. And die not in the mount, and excuse me, and die in the mount where thou go up. And be gathered unto thy people as Haram thy brother died in Mount Hor and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go there unto the land which I gave the children of Israel. Hallelujah. That was Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 through 52 in its entirety. We're going to pick on verse 20 right quick. And our topic again is faith and adding to it. Alright. Verse 20 said, And he said, I will hide my face from them, I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. This word faith only appears one time in Torah and one time in the Tanakh. That's it. Alright? But this word faith here in this instance was entry number 529. And it means established. And that word established means achieve permanent acceptance. Acceptance. It went on to say that faith means also trusty, trust, trustworthiness, and truth. This word faith was part of entry number 539, all man, A-W-M-A-N. And it means to build your support firm to trust or believe permanent. Somewhere along the line, the children of Israel did not have faith. Because as we read in the verse, it says, and he said, Yah said, I will hide my face from Israel. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. In those days, it wasn't so much that they had to have a belief in something they couldn't see. No. In those days, they had to have obedience to the law. And obedience to the law at that time was considered faith. We as the children of the Most High got to figure out, are we going to be these children of disobedience who had no faith? Or are we going to be the children of the covenant, keepers of the covenant, 
That's what we gotta ask ourselves. Our next stop today is in Habakkuk, chapter two. That's toward the back, right after Nahum. Habakkuk, chapter two. Verse 1 is written, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yah answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, Wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tear. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keeps at home, who enlarges his, his desire as hell, and as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathered unto him all nations, and heaps unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against them, and say, Woe unto him that increase that which is not his, how long unto him that lays himself with the cleft. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? And a weight that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. It sounds like something I, I, I'm wearing now from Ezekiel 39. Before y'all get to throwing stones at me, I'm going to slide over with the Ezekiel 39 verse 10 right quick. It says, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the force. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, says Yah Elohim. These words are in red. Alright, that's why they in red on my shirt. Alright, this is the Most High saying this. And he's saying it again back here. In uh, uh, Habakkuk, all right, verse 8 Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood and for the violence of the city and of the city, violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covet an evil covetness to his house, that he may set his nest on high that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people, and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the temple shall answer it. Woe to him that builds a town with blood, and establish a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of Yah El of hosts that the people shall labor, in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yah, as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that give his neighbor drink, that puts thy bottle to him, <laughs> and make him drunken also, that thou may look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shameful glory, drink thou also, and let, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yah's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee in the spoil of beasts which made them afraid. Because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, and of the city, and of all that dwell therein. What profits the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusts therein to make dumb idols. 
Woe unto him that say to the wood or wick to the dumb stone. Arise, it shall teach. <laughs> Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But Yah is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Hallelujah. That was Habakkuk chapter 2, 1 through 20. Let's pick on verse 4. It is written, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. His word faith in this instance was entry number 530. The scriptural Hebrew word emuna, E-M-U-N-A-H. And it means firmness, security, fidelity. And that word fidelity means faithfulness and loyalty. It goes on to mean strict conformity to truth or fact. Now if you're claiming you got faith, you want to have a strict conformity to truth or fact. If you show sure enough got faith, your faith is going to be uh, 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 urging you, or in along with the ruach, urging you into all truth. Some of the times we as Israel we skip the truth for the matter and want to get deep in spooky and long, elaborate orations and long immaculate speeches and deep and spooky and the whole time when all you had to do was tell the people repent for the kingdom of the most high is at hand we're going to talk today about this faith because this faith is something that allows us to have firmness and security who your faith is in you should be asking yourself some of you were hollering about um Happy New Year today. How is it? The, 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 uh, even for those who are uh, uh, counting 13 and 14 months, how is today's your New Year when you got to observe the new moon of a bee? How is it your New Year when the new moon don't come out until this evening? Who do you have your faith in? Is my question. Some of you all have been trying to kick Shemal Israel to the curb. Let the Qatar speak to the curb. You know, when you're, you're, you were in dire straits and deep spooky situations, our fastings and prayers were for you, and then you believe we were showing you every word out of the book. But now all of a sudden, you call yourself outgrown in what it is we have here. And we talk truth straight from the point, plain old scriptures. It ain't like I'm sending you the 15 books to uh, retrieve the information that we put out. No. We're bringing it to you live from the same book. One book. But yet and still, it seems like a lot of uh, Israel, their faith, is in man and not in the most high. And this is going to be a huge problem as we go forward and I walk throughout the course of this year. Many, many, many people started out with us and very few are still here. I'd rather have those who are hearers and doers of his covenant than to have a bunch of people that are wishy-washy and flip-flopping around me. In the back of the book, Paul was telling us to separate ourselves, mark them people and separate yourselves. And deliver them all over to Hashatan for the destruction of the flesh. That word, destruction of the flesh, when he was saying that, literally meant killing them so that their spirit, their soul can be saved. So on and all in how you read it. Alright? Let's go on. Our next stop today is in the back of the book. This is where I know I'm going to lose a lot of you super brews and all of you all that are, are, are so advanced so far and more far advanced than what we saying they're doing over here. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Kepha 
chapter 2, and we're going to be dealing with 1 through 22. Kepha come out swinging. Verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying Yah that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. For if Elohim spared not the mouth that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world but saved none the eighth person a preacher of lawfulness bringing in the flood upon the world of the unlawful and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live unlawfully and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that lawful man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed this lawful soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Yah knows how to deliver the lawful out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise governments, presumptuous are they self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas malice, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before Yah, but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unlawfulness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls a heart they have exercised with covetous practices Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unlawfulness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells with our water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the ebeds of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge, of Yah and Yeshua HaMashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of lawfulness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wildly in the mire. Hallelujah. I read this first for a purpose. I needed a backdrop before we go into chapter 1 of 2 Peter. Alright? 2 Peter chapter 1. Simon Kepha, Ebed, and an apostle of Yeshua HaMashiach. 
to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the lawfulness of Elohim and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Grace and shalom be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Elohim and of Yeshua HaMashiach. You notice that it's a difference? He's saluting the Most High and then he's saluting the Son. Notice it's a difference? Two different entities going on, all right? According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and lawfulness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, to patience lawfulness, to lawfulness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of Yah. And Yeshua HaMashiach. You see the difference? Of Yah and Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm only doing this to make a point. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it me as long as I am in this tabernacle. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as Yeshua HaMashiach hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from Elohim the Abba, or honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye dwell do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place unto the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but Kadosh men, set apart men of Elohim, spake as they were moved, by the Ruach HaKadosh. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at this. This word faith here. In 2 Peter 1. Alright. And Simon Kepha, Ebed, and Apostle Yeshua HaMashiach. To them that obtain like precious faith with us. Through the lawfulness of Elohim. And our Savior Yeshua HaMashiach. Some of you all got are still holding on to doctrine here in Israel that Yeshua is Elohim. If Yeshua was Elohim, Simon Kepha, a Ebed, and an apostle that was there wouldn't have been making a distinction about two different people. Two different entities are talked about here. Alright? We as the children of the Most High got to get in our hearts and our minds that the Most High is one, a cup, one. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. 
Here we got this word faith in verse 1. This word faith in this Greek <laughs> was a Greek word pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S. And it's from uh, entry number 4102. And pistis means persuasion, credence, conviction. Also in this word was another word. Entry number 39882, which was patho, P-E-I-T-H-O. And that word means to convince. Somewhere along the line, our hearts, our minds, Israel, got to be convinced that this is the word of the Most High. He gave it to men who was moved by his ruach to speak and to publish this way back when after receiving of it. Again, I ask, who is your faith in? Because a lot of you all are putting your faith in men. Putting your faith in uh, 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 other people and other entities. Some of Israel even made some of these men into Elohim. Yeah, they might got breath in them. They might be breathing or whatever. But remember what we read in chapter 2 verse 1. But there were false prophets, false navis among, also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying Yah that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. What are we saying? What are we doing? No, I ain't seen a scripture yet that tell me wait for 12 hour day and 12 hour night. I ain't seen a scripture yet that says the Sabbath before uh, 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 the day that you turn the time up and turn the time back. That's when you begin your count. If your faith is in this word, then in the word shall you be. Should you be, I should say. If your faith is in the most high and in his word. See, heaven and earth going to pass away. His word. It's going to be here. It's going to be like, I don't know, two million years later. Somebody going to find a piece of this. Find some of them, these t-shirts with these verses on them. Somebody going to find something and start putting this word back together. Alright? I'm saying that because we're in a day and time in these societies that we as Israel. We should have a distinction from the world. But again, a lot of Israel following damnable heresies talked about in 2 Peter 2 1. And we got to figure out what we saying, what we doing, who we going to listen to. All right. Let's drop down to um, verse 5. Verse five, 5 says, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Somewhere along the line people you gotta build and work your faith like people work out in the gym. Somewhere along the line Israel we gotta figure out what are we saying, what are we doing as far as how we dealing with these scriptures. Alright? It's very important for us to take a look at how we apply these scriptures unto our lives because our judgment is going to be predicated and based upon how we dealt with this word did we guard the word did we keep the word or did we let the word fall to the ground or did we kick the word to the side this word virtue here in verse 5 in 2 Peter 1 this word virtue is a Greek word Arte, and that word virtue means valor, excellence, moral goodness. So along with your, your faith, along with your persuasion and your credence and your conviction, along with you being convinced of something, you got to add to it valor, 
excellence, moral goodness. Some of you all are wondering why your prayers ain't answered. Do you have any valor with your faith? Do you? I ain't fussing. I'm saying all this in love. You don't see me in here smacking my glass table. Alright? <laughs> I'm asking you this in love. Look at the next word. It said after you add the virtue, then you add knowledge. Alright? You add the knowledge to the virtue. That word knowledge was entry number 1108 in the scriptural Greek. And it was a scriptural Greek word gnosis. K um G N O S I S. And it means an inquiry, investigation. If you want to know something, you're going to investigate it. Where's your faith at? Many people in Israel today are telling people a lot of things. Are you investigating them things? If you say you walk by faith and not by sight and all of this, are you investigating them things? Because you're supposed to add to your faith virtue and then add the virtue knowledge. The word knowledge means inquiry, investigation. Are you digging in these scriptures and lining them up? Get two or three witnesses? Or are you just listening to somebody tell you some stuff and all of a sudden you want to just take it at face value, having faith in that person? Or are you going to investigate? Remember, you shall have no other Elohim before the Most High. That's our covenant. That's our marital vow. But because you don't want to take time to add to your faith, you rather listen to somebody over here. Now all of a sudden you got to go outside and take five steps forward, three steps backwards, and do a little step to the side and step to the right, and then all of a sudden it's New Year's. Now, show me that in Scripture. Show me a lot of what everybody's saying that today, uh, when the new moon is finally sighted, when the new moon is finally sighted, remember now, Deuteronomy 16 and 1 said, observe, mean to look for. Keep listening to these people. People giving you all kinds of names. You want a name for the true and living Elohim of Israel? Go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and look up G-O-D and follow every number that the Strong's lexicon, Vines or whoever, whatever research tool you using for the language, scriptural Hebrew, follow every name, then the names, and then throw in there Psalm 68 verse 4. What are you adding to your faith? Who's your faith in? You, you, your faith in a man? The next thing it says, verse 6 says, into knowledge, temperance, into temperance, patience, into patience, Eloheemness, lawfulness. Look at 6. So after you add your investigation to your, to your, uh, uh, your valor, then adding that to your faith, you got to add this temperance in there. And that word temperance was a big Greek word from entry number 1466. It was in crack, in crack, tire, in And this word means self control. One who has mastered. Their desires and passions. That temperance. That temperance means self-control. One who has mastered their desires and passions. Have you mastered that and added that to your investigation? To your valor and your excellence? To add them to your faith which has you in persuasion? 
and credence and conviction, this is how a lot of the word get choked out of a lot of people. Along with it falling on bad soil and people not uh, 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 watering it. You know, letting it take root. This is how you're going to let your faith take root. By adding to it. Knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience. This word patience was hupomone. I was laughing last night. Hupomone. And that means cheerful or hopeful. So if you got patience waiting on something, you got cheer and hope. But you got to add that cheer and hope to your self-control, to your inquiry, your investigation, to your valor and your excellence, and add that to your persuasion, your credence, and your conviction. Do you have that? Who is your faith in? Ask yourself. Am I trusting the leaders without reading? You know whether, whether or not you read. And many people around you know, readers know who read and who don't read. Alright? I'm going to just say that. Man. And after the patience, you add that patience, you got to put this thing called Eloheimness. Lawfulness to it. And that right there means to be pious, set apart, holy. Now, if you truly had faith in the Most High, you wouldn't be flocking and running like everybody else flocking and running to all the shenanigans that they ain't proven through Scripture. If you were really a child of the Most High, believe in the Most High, moving according to his election and purpose in the word of the Most High, your faith and your trust is in the Most High, then you ain't moving like everybody else. Verse 7 says, Into this Eloheimlessness, Brotherly kindness into brotherly kindness, charity. Brotherly and kindness were both the same word, Philadelphia, and this fraternal affection. Meaning you gotta have some love for your brother. Twice, two times. You doubled up over here with this one. So you gotta double up on your love for your brother. So that you can have your, and also on top of that, you got to put your, your, your piety, your piety, uh, uh, your set of partners in there. Then you got to be cheerful and hopeful. And then you got to master your desires and your passions. And then you got to inquire and investigate. And then you got to have valor and excellence. All in conjunction and working with. This word faith, which means persuasion, credence, and conviction. You got to have all of this working. Do you have it? Who's your faith in? And then it says, to brotherly kindness, verse 7, 2 Peter chapter 1. You got to add charity to brotherly kindness. Are you doing that? Are you making it possible that those who need to reach you and get in touch with you, you call yourself a, 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 an administer of the Most High's word and you call yourself a Moray, a, a Zakane, a Paqua, a pastor, a shepherd. You say you these things. But do you have the necessary charity, which was the scriptural Greek word agape, which means love, affection, a love feast? Do you have the type of mentality that people can actually approach you and ask you a question about the scripture? I ain't telling saying that, you know, you wrong for rejecting a bunch of foolishness. Nah, separate. Set apart. 
예. 우리 집 페이팅. Our next stop today is in Jacob. The brother James, right after Hebrews, just before Kepha. We in chapter two. We'll read one through twenty-six. We're only dealing with faith and adding to it. It is written, my brethren. Have not the faith of Yeshua HaMashiach, the master of glory with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that wear the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool? Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not Elohim chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect the persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not murder. Now if you commit no adultery, yet if you murder, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy Rejoices against judgment. What profit? What do it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? If an alcohol Kobe be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in shalom, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What do it profit? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believe that there is one L. Thou do well. Uh oh. <laughs> we just went over it. <laughs> one Elohim. Thou do well. Hashatan also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our Abba justified by works when he had offered Esau his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith through his works and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed Elohim and it was imputed unto him for lawfulness, and he was called the friend of Elohim. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the Ruach is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Hallelujah. Are we seeing how this is working out over here? We as the people of the Most High, if you're struggling, ask the Most High to help your unbelief. That's all you got to do. Let's go to our next stop. Romans chapter 10.
It's right after X. The Apostle Shaul come out swinging. Verse 1. My heart's desire and prayer to Elohim for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Elohim, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of Elohim's lawfulness and going about to establish their own lawfulness, have not submitted themselves unto the lawfulness of Elohim. For Yeshua HaMashiach is the end of the law for lawfulness to everyone that believes. For Moshe describes the lawfulness which is of the law, that the man which do those things shall live by them. But the lawfulness which is of faith speaks on this wise, Say not in thy heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Yeshua down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Yeshua again from the dead. But what says it? The word is my thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Yeshua HaMashiach, and shall believe in thy heart that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But you got some more work to do. Verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto lawfulness, and with the mouth confession is made unto Yeshua. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Yahudim and Greek, for the same Elohim over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yah shall be saved. But you still got to get in that water for remission of sins so that you can receive the Ruah. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the glad tidings of shalom and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the glad tidings. For Isaiah say, Yah, who have believed our report. So then, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of Elohim. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, truly. Their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moshe says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation. I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not, that asked not after me. But to Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Hallelujah. Who are we going to believe? Who is our faith in? Are you willing to add those things to your faith? Let's take a look at verse 17. It is written. So then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of Elohim. Faith come by hearing. Some of you all wonder why we over here read from verse 1. Most of the time they read all the way to the end and I come back and pick one. Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word. A lot of you all don't have no faith because you haven't heard the word. Plain old unadulterated word without it getting mixed up for something slick. Let's look at this word uh, uh, hearing in verse 17. In the uh, uh, scriptural Greek, that word hearing was A-K-O-A-Y. And it means ear, fame, report. 
court. Remember. So we are going to lie. We as his children got to really, really put ourselves in a position to hear his word. Go back and judge that word. And see whether or not that word is true. Before we begin to just take it and run with it. Some of you all uh, uh, eat at so many different tables. It's unreal. That's why your doctrine, you open your mouth, you all over the place. A lot of Israel need to go back to churchianity. Shouldn't have never left. Because when you violate one part of the Torah, you violate the whole thing. Shouldn't have never left. Should have stayed over there. Thinking that you're doing the mighty one of Israel's work. Leading them astray in the false names under false pretenses. A lot of you all are leading people astray based on what you heard somebody else say. You have no knowledge of what you said. You just heard something else that sound good. Give you an example. If I was to ask right now, what tribe is everybody from? Everybody want to pick a tribe and put it? And I ask you to start showing me scripture other than Deuteronomy 28, 68. Show me a scripture that says because of the complexion of your skin, you're that in this country. A lot of you all are still passing lies about who Esau is. Look, the most high looking at your heart at this point. Alright? You got to figure out what you saying and what you doing. Because you, you start bringing a, a, a lot of those ideologies and doctrines and false teachings and false prophecies prophecies of everybody else over here to where people read that stuff going to get cut up you going to get mad you going to be like uh, 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 uh. don't nobody got time for the shenanigans remember that word hearing means fame report and rumor if you dealing with somebody and you getting more of them talking versus more scripture then it's a problem our next stop, Galatians. Right after 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. Some of you all are wondering why your prayers aren't answered. Why you struggle like so. Let's take a look. To the people of Galatians. Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast therefore in liberty wherewith Yeshua hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold I Shaul say unto you. That if ye be circumcised. Yeshua shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Yeshua has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For through the Ruach, wait for the hope of lawfulness by faith. For in Yeshua HaMashiach, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision but faith which works by love. Ye did run well who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion comes not of him that called you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you through Yah that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubles you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the tree cease. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. 
Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Ruach, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Ruach, and the Ruach against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Ruach, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Other which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. But the fruit of the Ruach is love. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Yeshua's have impaled the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Ruach, let us also walk in the Ruach. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at this. Verse 6. For in Yeshua HaMashiach neither circumcision avail anything nor uncircumcision, but faith works, but faith which works by love. Some of you all are trying to get your faith and your works activated. Got love? <laughs> you got love on your side? <laughs> you got love in you? <laughs> Faith only work by love. Look, we got to figure out what we saying, what we doing, how we moving. If we going to walk by faith, we need to have love. You can't say you are officer in the most high's tabernacle. And then run around here and ain't got no love. But yet and still you doing these things by faith that the most high might account your works. Nah, it don't work like that. You got to have love. Our last scripture for today. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to read 1 through 21. It is written, Let as many ebeds as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of Elohim and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithfully and beloved partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of Yeshua HaMashiach and to the doctrine which is according to lawfulness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof comes envy, strife, railings, evil sermon scenes, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, Supposing that gain is lawfulness from such, withdraw thyself. But lawfulness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of Elohim, flee these things and follow after lawfulness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed the good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of Elohim, who quickens all things, and before Yeshua HaMashiach, who before Pontius Pilate witness a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of Yeshua HaMashiach which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings and master of masters, who only have immortality dwelling in a light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting are me. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living Elohim, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, an opposition of science falsely so-called, with some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Remember earlier, we just read about how the poor has riches. Remember that? Some of you all refusing to marry certain people because of their financial state. Well, we just read earlier how the poor has faith. And I'm going to tell you some real good stuff. People wondered how brown people since the transatlantic slave ship kept surviving. They may have been calling on the wrong names and using the wrong words and got forced into the wrong day. The Most High knew their heart and allowed them to thrive even in this day and time. Let's look at verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. The only fight we got, people, the only fight it talks about in the back of this book is for us to fight the good fight of faith. And in that good fight of faith, just know you got to hold on. You got to add to your, your faith some charity, brotherly kindness, some lawfulness, patience, temperance, knowledge, and virtue. Build your faith. Faith like a muscle. You got to work it out. I got to work that out. But faith, got, faith is like a muscle. Praise and worship. Prayer like a muscle. You got to work it out. Exercise it daily. And exercise is sort of the ruach in your prayer. I hope and pray that we all understand that it ain't for us to have faith in man. Our faith should be in the most high. Let's pray. Father Yah, as we kneel before your throne of mercy and grace, we spread forth our hands unto thee, Father, praising you and thanking you for keeping us for life, health, and strength, praising you and keeping for keeping us through this, resting thee in the exhortation of your word. Allow us to apply the exhortation of your word unto our lives, Father. 
We ask that you would show us how to build our faith and add to our faith. We ask, Father, that you would go before us in the course of this upcoming week and by faith subdue all those who would try to persecute our souls and rise up against us, Father. We ask that you would allow the difference to be seen between we, your commandment-keeping children, and those who don't keep your commandments. Show the difference, Father. Show the set of partners. Make it manifest, Father. Even in our lives, Father, our financial lives, many are looking for a tremendous work week after the sun go down, Father. We ask that you would bless us, guide us, and keep us, favor us. By faith, line up people now, put it in their hearts and minds, Father. And when we talk about your word and talk about the goodness of you and the, the wisdom you have allowed us to make things to sell, that we're favored, Father. I can't take my faith to the rental office or to the gas company, to the light company, to the car people. But by faith, I know you will allow me to gather so I don't owe no man. We ask, Father, that as we exercise our faith, Father, that you will exercise, Father, the difference between those who are obedient to your covenant versus those who aren't. We ask this in your Son, Yeshua, name we pray. Hallelujah. We praise and thank the Most High for allowing you all to join us. And by all means, if you got any questions about anything said, you, most of you all have our number. My number is on the page. You can inbox me and ask me for my number. I'll give it to you. Just make sure uh, uh, if you got a question, ask a question. Don't call me to try to preach some garbage to me that your faith in another man allowed you to learn. Because I ain't falling for it. You all be blessed and enjoy the rest of your rest. Shabbat Shalom.